guys, I ride 705 here. Um, I just did this video a few seconds ago and I realized I didn't turn on my mic, so I'm going to do it again. Uh, today I'm going to start tearing into the new sled. Um, this is the snow machine that we trained it for Frankenstein. And uh, it's an 08 chassis, the XP chassis. Um, it's got the longer track on it, I can't remember, I think it's a 137. And um, I bought it, it was filthy. I did a little bit of cleaning to it, um, but that's really not what I'm uh, trying to accomplish. I did do, a, like I said, I cleaned it quite a bit. This is really scummy. It's still very dirty. Like, I'm not happy with this. I would, I would never have a machine that, that, that dirty. Um, it's, um, the, biggest, the biggest problem with it right now is the guy's running half race fuel, half premium in it, and I want to run just straight premium and not have it detonate. So, um, it's got a 600 RS motor in it, which is a race sled motor, and it's got 700 cc uh, jugs on it, which is a very common mod because they bolt right on. Now, um, the guy was a diesel mechanic. I'm not too sure how familiar he is with snow machines. I know he had the heads cut from a guy here in Sudbury. And that's scary because uh, I don't trust anybody in this area to do anything like this. So I definitely want to check the cc's, and I'm going to check the squish span, and after that, once we get it on the lake, I'll double check the jetting. I'm not going to run it on the rampant edge. Um, I don't care if it's a bit rich. As long as it's not fouling plugs and it's running okay, then I'm fine with that. I'm not the type of guy to uh, run it to the fine edge for that extra 510 horsepower. I could really care less about the horsepower. Um, it's probably going to put out, I'm guessing, about 140 horse the way it is. It's got some porting on that uh, 700. Um, so even if it runs at 135 horse, and that's fine with me. I'm just looking to uh, basically have a ditch banger, play around the trails. Um, I'm not looking to race anybody. It does have, I believe, a 20, 20 top tooth on this, so the gearing's very low. Um, the gauge shows the maximum speed the sleds ever been in at uh, 100 miles an hour. 100 miles an hour, not very fast for this kind of sled. Um, should probably do about 110 all day long, but um, that's okay with me. Like I said, I can care less about top speed. Uh, I just want a little bit of pep when you crack the throttle. It's got um, the RS600 twin pipe set up on it. So it's actually got two pipes. And uh, it's a lot more empty than, uh, than a regular XP chassis. Now there goes the air compressor. I'm gonna pop these off here. Sorry about the noise, guys. I am uh, actually working today, or supposed to be working. Taking a break here to make a quick video. So yeah, it, it's actually really empty. You could actually put your hand through here. Normally on the XP, you can't get anywhere near here. It's brutal. They come apart pretty easy though. Now that I say that, I'm struggling to get this off. <laughs> Most of just pop off. <laughs> That's all kinds of weird. There we go. That was weird. Now put that little pin back in there so I don't lose it. Yeah, it is still pretty filthy. Like all this, like this is just brutal. Like, so there's the engine there. Like I said, it, it's really easy to see. Um, I'm gonna strip everything off. I'm gonna take the air box off. I'm gonna take everything off so I can get a really good look at it and I could go in there and actually clean it really well. But basically, I'm gonna take the head off it. Um, I want to see first of all what kind of a job he did on these. These are actually domes, they're interchangeable. So I can order these online if I really want to, but um, I'm not going to, I'm going to cut my own stuff. I've, uh, I've done Skidoo domes before, hundreds actually, for, uh, for one of my biggest customers at the time. For snowmobile stuff he was. Um, so anyways, I'm quite competent on uh, cutting my own heads, I like to believe. <laughs> so, going to clean it up, going to see, see the chambers. I think I'm supposed to get like 33 cc's or whatever it is. I got the math uh, all figured out. And uh, I could show you guys how to do that. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to check the squish band on this, which is something that I don't think a lot of guys do know how to do. So uh, some guys will run around, blow their motor, and decide, oh, okay, I'm going to buy new cylinders, new base gasket, new, you know, get everything all fixed up. And they don't even take any consideration into how thick the base gasket was. And that is super crucial. So if you get a base gasket that's a bit thinner and your squish band tightens up, 
that's all bad. And then you're back into rebuilding your motor wondering, what did I do wrong? So, um, yeah, that's just something that, if you're going to do your own motor work, you should, you should be well aware of all that kind of stuff. So, all right, guys, I'm going to cut this off. I'm just gonna, basically going to tear into this thing. I'm going to take off all the covers, everything I can, the air box, and I'm not going to go through that because it's going to be a long video. And um, I got some other stuff on the go today. I'm, uh, I'm working, I'm running the CNC's. I'm actually making some billet levers for the XP's, for, for those sleds there. I've got a customer ordered a whole bunch. So um, I'm gonna jump back and forth on the machines and working on this on the side, so I'm not gonna uh, video the whole thing. Um, once I get into the motor, once I get everything all, all stripped off, I am definitely gonna turn on the camera and uh, walk you through what we're gonna do. So uh, let's get this thing all tuned up, ready to go. Well, here we are now. I just took a few panels off, not far from when we were actually talking a few minutes ago. Sorry about the noise. Uh, I'll try to talk over it if I can. For the uh, panels, there's, there's little screws everywhere. They're Torx, um, I think they're 30s actually, right in here. There's a whole bunch all the way around. You'll see when you move the panels, they'll, you know, there'll be spots that caught. To uh, take off the seat, you reach on the front here, lift this up, and there's a little plastic tab there. Just grab that, pull it off, and yeah, buddy, all done. I guess somebody decided to uh, put their autograph on underneath the seat. Pretty awesome. So um, yeah, I just wanted to cut in and show you that. Um, I'm gonna do that once in a while just to, to help you guys take it apart if there's anything that's kind of fudgy. And uh, go from there, thanks. Cleaned up the sled pretty good. It's not perfect, the aluminum's really, really hard to get immaculate. Uh, collects dirt real well, but as you can see, we got this all fairly clean and underneath there. Um, somebody had the bright idea to paint the cylinders. Um, I didn't talk a lot too much. I would like to get that removed. But uh, I'm leaving it for now because if I need to adjust my squish band, then I'm going to actually take the cylinders right off to put a different base gasket underneath there. Um, and that all depends on if the squish is good, I'm going to leave it alone. If I need to CC it, then I'm just taking the head off it. Um, but if the squish is too tight, I'm probably, and the, and the CC would be correct if I raise the base gasket, then I'm going to leave it alone. But the chances of that all falling into uh, to place probably pretty slim. So chances are I'm taking the cylinders off. So right now I uh, I took all the plastics off, the gauges off, everything's off, air box. I left this this air box here that's connected to the carbs. It's not in our way. So I'm just going to take uh, the spark plug caps off and take the spark plugs out, take all the head bolts off it basically, and pop this off. And I'm going to manually measure the squish just for the hell of it. And then. Um, I am going to uh, just bolt the head back on and check the actual squish band on it. But right now I'm just going to take the head off, take a look at what the actual cylinders look like inside. And uh, we'll go from there. I need to take the head off anyways because I, I need to CC it. And when I CC it, I'm going to put grease over where the, the ring is. So um, when I fill it up with liquid, the liquid doesn't just go down in the crank. So that way I can get a CC on the, uh, on the head. There goes the air compressor. So on that note, I'm going to uh, just rip off the bolts off the head and I'll uh, turn the camera on back on when we got the cylinders off. All right guys, um, I have the head off the cylinders. Here we go. Um, I checked everything, everything looks really good. You can see there's, that's piston wash. That's what they're talking about when they talk about piston wash. It's where the air fuel mixture wash the piston and um, wash off the carbon. So if you're running rich, you get more piston wash. So uh, this looks pretty good. Not a good indication though because I've been running it in the shop on and off the trailer. You're really supposed to do a good run with it and then check it. Um, and for that, you use a bore scope. You look down the piston hole. It's like a little camera with a scope. Uh, you can buy them for like 30 bucks US. They're not, they're not expensive. Cylinders look really good. No scoring. Um, I'm checking the exit, the side of the piston on the exhaust side. No burning. Everything looks great there. I checked the squish. Now to, uh, to check the squish, what I did was measure the distance from top dead center, so when the piston's all the way up, from this lip here to the top of the piston, I got 40 thousandths. And then I checked the head from this distance to this and I got 25 thousandths. So that's telling me my squish is 65 thousandths. Um, I was looking for a little bit more than that, 70, 75 thou. So um, I'll probably cut down another 10 thou off of that. This was a 600 head. They cut it to fit the combustion chamber of a 700, so they had to open up the diameter on this. How they did this was absolutely retarded. 
I've never seen this done before. I don't know if you can get away with that. The sled did run. Mind you, it ran on race fuel. Um, but there's an angle here. I can't remember the exact angle with the use on heads. I'd have to check in, look into that or measure this, but this is stock. Um, I think it's five degrees. They opened up this section here to make the bore larger and they made it flat. This is actually not tapered with this, which is ridiculous. Um, another thing that kind of concerns me is this was a head with combustion area from a 600 race sled, which has a high compression to start off with. And, oh, damn air compressor. <laughs> I'll try to talk over it. Okay, so it's a combustion chamber. It's high compression, made for a 600. All of a sudden, we put it into a 700 mortar, which has more cubic inches. And we don't actually, they didn't actually cut this any larger. So I'm guessing when I check all this, my compression ratio is gonna be through the roof. Um, not sure about that. I'm gonna check it. I'm definitely gonna put this back in the CNC and cut from this edge down here and actually have the proper taper. Um, I don't like this flat, this flat area, that's not proper. On this side here, you can see one point in time it blew up. Um, this is also not cleaned up, which uh, you could probably get away with that. I don't know really if you're gonna get any hot spots or anything going on there. You probably get away with it. I don't think this gets terribly, terribly hot because uh, it's got coolant all the way around it. But since I'm opening this up probably 10th thou lower and I'm thinking I'm gonna have to um, increase the CCs of this here too. So this here is gonna be chopped you know, straight across plus the angle. So it's gonna, it's gonna take probably about 20 thou off this surface here. So that'll clean up 90% of all these little imperfections. And then um, I'm probably gonna have to open up this diameter here to, um, to get the CCs that I want. There's a lot of squish band. This is a squish band, they call it. Um, there's a lot of area there. We actually increased the diameter of this thing so I can increase it here and, and not really worry about it. You're supposed to have, I believe, 50% squish band area to the actual area, um, like the diameter, whatever you want to call it, the surface area of the circle. So 50% of that surface area should be 50% of, you know, no, this whole surface area. If that makes any sense to you. So there we go with that. Um, my next step now to actually CC the head. I'm going to lower the piston down a little bit. I'm gonna put some grease in here, curl it up, wipe all the grease off real nice. And what that's gonna do is create a perfect seal. So when I CC it with, uh, I'm probably gonna use gas. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna use for a liquid, but um, the, the reason I wanna use gas or something like that is because if it goes back into the crank, it's not that bad as gas. It's not something that's not gonna burn. Um, it should pretty much end up in my exhaust port as soon as I lower it. There goes the exhaust ports open up first. So if I curl it down nice and slow, I should be able to get most of the gas right out of the exhaust port. But you know, if some leaks by or does whatever, it's, it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, one thing I did when I took off the head, just mentioning that, is that I did not, I should have rotated the, the piston halfway through its compression area. And when I took it off, there's some coolant that's in the head. It leaked down inside there and pulled on this one. And this one here was at, at the bottom of the cycle. So it actually went down into the crank. So it went down into my intake ports. So when I fire this thing up, it's probably gonna smoke white for a few minutes um, or maybe even have a hard time starting. I'm not sure. So that was a mistake on my part. A lot of people drain it right from the bottom here, the coolant, um, but I want to keep the coolant in the engine as much as I can. Uh, I also jacked up the front of the sled to make that lower. That way there, all the coolant in the rads doesn't come out crawling over here, pour out, and like a bunch of air pockets back there. If I do take the cylinders off, then I'm gonna, um, which I'm probably not going to because I, I think I'm gonna cut the head anyway, so I should be able to leave the cylinders on there now. But um, I'm going to raise it a bit higher if I have to take the cylinders off. Again, just to make sure that I don't lose the coolant that's all in the rads. What I don't want is air, bu air bubbles and pockets. Uh, when I reassemble it, I'll fill these up with coolant as much as I can, put the head back on it, and then uh, as I drive it, I'll have to add a little bit of coolant here and there, but it should be uh, not too bad. All right, hope that somewhat makes sense to you. Um, I'm gonna go get some um, grease. I actually have spray lithium grease, so I'm just gonna spray it around the cylinder wall, curl the piston up, wipe the grease off, and get this ready to, uh, to CC. Once I'm all set up, with the head torque back on and everything's back on, I'm gonna show you how to CC that. 
Um, in case you're wondering, I do have the little O-rings off. They go around here in the cylinders. I just took them off to clean them. So they go there. I'm gonna put those back in, obviously. And like I say, retorque the head to spec. I'll have to look that up because I don't recall what it was. And then, um, yeah, we're gonna fill this combustion chamber full of liquid, measure the CCs, and that's gonna tell us our compression ratio, which is gonna determine what kind of fuel we can safely run in here and not have detonation, pre-detonation, I should say. So um, stay tuned for that. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna show you how to uh, put the grease in and seal up the cylinder before I go down and bolt on the head. I'm gonna use this. I was uh, talking about some spray white lithium I had. Um, I was gonna use it and I found it really thin. First thing I'm gonna do is clean my hands because I don't wanna put any metal chips or contaminants in there. Um, my shot Well, I guess I used another roll. Oh, here we go. All right. Sorry about the shakiness. It's kind of a two-hand job sometimes. All right, so we're gonna go in there, clean all this off. Clean my finger off real good here. Grab a little bit of grease. It doesn't need to be a whole, whole lot. And what we're gonna do, let's see if I get the camera in there. Yeah, we're just gonna put a little bead all the way around. Coat the cylinder wall. I'm putting quite a bit in there and you don't really need to put that much, but. All right, so now I'm gonna bring the cylinder up. You can see it's scraping all the grease. We're gonna go in there and get rid of all that grease, whatever came out. We're top dead center. I'm gonna go in there and wipe that better with two hands. And then we're gonna reassemble the head. Now that's gonna seal it. So when we put um, our gas to CC it, it's not gonna pour down between the ring and go down into the cylinder. So there goes the air compressor again. Okay. So I'm gonna go and uh, rebolt the head, retorque it, and I'll get everything ready to CC it. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that and uh, get a measurement off this thing. All right guys, let's do that again. I keep forgetting to turn the volume on on this thing, so I'm talking to myself a lot. I uh, I grabbed the verniers, stuck it down the spark plug hole, I got this all torqued down now, and I just rotate the crank till the piston's at the top dead center, which is the highest point. Um, we already have our grease in there. I know you saw me grease this cylinder, but actually um, I want to use a cylinder that's not damaged on the head, and that it's on this side. I had it backwards when I was looking at it. Um, so from there, I filled in this little, um, it's called a barrette. It's a little measurement for cc's. Filled it up full of gasoline. And uh, when we pour that down in the cylinder, it'll give us how many cc's we have. We're gonna do the math, and we're gonna find out exactly what the compression ratio on this engine is as it is right now. Oh, that air compressor is annoying. So um, I'm gonna let you guys go for that because uh, I want two hands for this, and I wanna pay attention to what I'm doing. I'll get back on here. I will, um, Tell you what the compression ratio is. I'm going to show you the math on how to calculate that as well, and uh, and away we go. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do to cut the heads. Yeah. All right, guys. I got the CC measurement on the head. Um, we were looking at 29.1 CCs. As you can see, I got the spark plug cap full, and uh, it's not going down. It's holding a good seal. Um, I kind of hurried up when I did it, made sure I filled it real quick in case there was some leakage. But uh, I could tell now by looking at it, there is no leakage past the cylinder. So. That's a good accurate reading. I believe from my math, I was supposed to be 31, 32 cc's. That's three cc's away from where I am now. I'm gonna double check my math. I can't quite remember what it was. Um, but yeah, it definitely is running high compression right now. And uh, the way it's set up, I'm surprised the guy didn't blow it up. So um, yeah, 29.1 cc's. I'm gonna get rid of my gas here. Get it out of here. Let's go do some math. I'm gonna show you how it's done. These guys are wondering uh, what my background is in engines. I am not an engine builder. I'm no great expert or... Um, a long time ago, I used to work at a performance shop. They used to build custom race sleds and uh, 
I learned to live with squish band compression ratio. And from that, I um, got a lot of good connections with people that know a lot of stuff about this. So, uh, like this math, I wasn't familiar with it. I don't remember how to do it. It's been forever since I've done this kind of stuff on my own. And um, I got somebody to help me out with that. I also used to make combustion chambers for um, cutting erasing, actually, a long time ago. And uh, those are the domes we actually used to cut here for him. This is a 13 to 1 compression. And uh, so we're quite capable of making our own combustion chambers. And um, I, know the, I know the math on it, done it, as you can tell. We've made hundreds of these, they work really well. And um, so we're gonna end up doing that for that 700, we're gonna chop the head on it. I guarantee you right now that compression is gonna be way high. Now, here's how it goes. Um, I'll show you my piece of paper here. It is a 700cc motor right now. Um, that's bore and stroke calculated, but basically that's uh, it's a 700 and the stroke's the same on the 600cc engine. So it's 700cc is a stroke. We got, we're gonna divide that in two because uh, we're talking about one cylinder, not two. It's two pistons in that sucker. Um, so we got 350 plus 29.1. So let's do the math on that. I shouldn't even need a calculator for this. I don't. You know what? I'm going to use a calculator. It, just in case. I, should. I hate to mess this up. So we've got 379.1. And then you divide it by the compression. Uh, the actual CC. Sorry, not the compression, but the CC here. So you divide it back by that same number. And that's going to tell us the compression ratio. So divide it by 29.1. That's not horrible. It's not horrible. So we got 13 to one compression and I'm looking for 12 to one and 12 to one is going to let me run regular pump fuel. Um, I'm also looking to increase the squish band by 10 thou. So now what I'm going to do to actually accomplish this and to know how much to take off, I'm going to take the, um, um, the head off that and I'm going to CC just the head itself and, um, I'm going to do my math on what I need to get 12 to 1. I already did the math on it. I can't remember what it was. 31 and a half cc's is what I, uh, what I was supposed to have. So if we do the math on that, it's 350 plus 31. Oh shit, you know what? I forgot about something. Um, I forgot that I have the spark plug. I filled up the spark plug chamber with... Uh, with gas as well, so that's 2.2 cc's, so that number is not even correct. 29.1 minus 2.2 cc's. 26.9 cc's is the actual volume in there. My bad guys, my bad. 350, so that is gonna raise the compression even more. 350 plus 26.9 divided by 26.9 14 to 1 compression is what we're actually running. That's pretty steep. That's some race fuel shit right there for sure. So he was mixing half and half, uh, getting away with that. Half race fuel, half premium. We want to lower that down to here. So um, I did the math before, and I believe I'm supposed to be 31.5 cc. So I'm going to have to increase that by uh, whatever it comes out to, 3.6 uh, cc's, cc's more to actually get that, that number correct. Um, so yeah, let's do that, that calculation again. So it's 350 plus 31.5, what's that? Divided by 31.5 equals 12.1111111 to 1. Ah. So that's the number we're looking for there. So somewhere between uh, 31 and 32 cc's will be golden. Um, if we measured it the same way as we're doing now, we'd have to add that 2.2 cc's for the actual spark plug cap, but um, I got ways of getting around that. I have a spark plug that's chopped off and sealed, so when I cc the, the dome, I know I need to take out um, the difference between those two, which is uh, 26.9. point six cc's. That's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. So there you have it, guys. I hope that makes some sense to you. We're going to chop those heads. We're going to take 4.6 cc's out of every dome, both domes. 
and that's going to bring our compression ratio back down to 12 to 1. I'm also going to increase the squish by uh, 10 thou to bring us up to about um, 75 thou. I think we we're at 65 from what I measured there. I remember, yeah, yeah, it was 40 plus 25. So we're going to increase that, clean up the heads, and um, we're going to get this thing running on pump fuel and running real good. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to make another episode for that. I'm going to cut this off now, guys. This is it. Um, I, this video is going to be uh, 10 hours long if I continue. Well, once I, um, I'm ready to cut the heads, I'll probably cut into another video and I'll actually do the whole reassembly, re-chopping the heads, re seeing the heads and doing everything that needs to be done there. So um, if this interests you, follow, uh, follow my next videos and uh, we'll finish this up. Thanks.